What's up, Beardo? So today I am going to go through NINA. So NINA stands for Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. And this is a free and open source application that is available for download. And uh, it's typically you'll find people who are doing, you know, um, image acquisition. They're usually these days either using NINA or using Sequence Generator Pro. Now, full disclosure, I am an avid Sequence Generator Pro user. I do not use NINA. So please don't take this as a review of NINA. Um, I am not definitely not the expert. I, I will try it. I will try using it for a couple of imaging sessions and uh, see how I like it. A lot of people love it. Um, but my main purpose here today is actually to go through the framing wizard um, because I already did a video on Sequence Generator Pros. And uh, I think it would be good to go through uh, you know the one on sequence uh, on uh, Nina. So right off the bat, I'm I'm in Nina, so we can get into it now. And a uh, couple of things that I noticed that are a little bit different. So first is you know you can connect. There's an equipment tab where you can connect your equipment. Um, and uh, actually, the cool thing uh, is you can actually set the coordinates and slew to them. So I've already done that. Um, so I can show you a little bit more. Than I was able to in Sequence Generator Pro. So, um, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but as I said in the last video, like I really like doing the framing out in the field where I can determine what the angle of rotation my uh, current um, setup is at. And then uh, from there, determine like how I want to frame up the image uh, and whether or not I really want to mess with, uh, with my current setup. So under imaging, here I'll show you real quick how how I what I found so far on um, plate solving. And again, please don't don't take this as the you know kind of like a uh, tutorial on this. Like this is just me messing around. But I still have the same uh, camera simulator set up, and I've connected the telescope. And so I'll take an exposure. Exposure is one second. Um, see if I can fit this on the screen. So it's the same exposure you saw. And then there's this nifty little button here. Now you, it's a little bit more set up than, well, I don't know, maybe it's about the same amount of setup as for the plate solver, but you have to set up plate solve two, uh, which is a plate solver. And then you click this button and it will plate solve this particular image. You notice how it's the same exact program and this will hit 20 and actually uh, find, uh, find it. And uh, we get the RA and deck. Um, and it gives you the orientation. So 269.71, uh, this should say degrees, um, on here. So, uh, pretty cool. So you find it out right away and, uh, I think it's uh, pretty nifty. Okay. So, uh, let's, you know, now that we have this, uh, let's go through the, uh, framing wizard. So if you go to framing, you can, uh, Right away, one big difference is the image source. Uh, you can actually select which image source. And I tried NASA. NASA took a long time to come back, and it didn't come back right. So uh, I ended up using this HIPS 2 fit sky survey um, to actually pull it down. So this is the source that when you put the object name, um, this is where it's going to get the image from. Um, so I'll just put the same North American Nebula. MGC 7000 and it pulls it up. There it is. What's the RA and deck? So, similarly, you can put the RA and deck. I don't know, and it do definitely doesn't make it intuitive uh, whether you can put an Astro bin URL. Uh, might be something to check into later. Um, you have the field, same thing, field of view uh, there. You have similarly the camera parameters, so uh, the pixel size. And the focal length. The one difference here is that it doesn't use the uh, pixel scale uh, uh, or the the pixels per arc or arc seconds per pixel. Um, it, instead, you put in the focal length of your scope and the pixel size and the width and height of your camera sensor. So, um, besides just a few fit and finish things, I would say. You know, as of right now, it's got a lot of the same type of uh, functionality. I also think like 
Here, you'll notice that the overlap percentage, the same thing in Sequence Generator Pro, it's moved into the target area, which makes a lot more sense than putting it in the camera area as far as like how much overlap for the panels. So I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and um, load the image. So I'm going to select this HIPS 2 Fit Sky Survey instead of the NASA one. Uh, and I'm going to hit load. And you can see it comes back. And uh, this must also be the, the, the one that's used in, uh, in Sequence Generator Pro because it looks exactly the same. So similarly, you can see here, here's my image, and here's the area, and uh, I've got my box, so you don't draw or anything like that. You can put how many you want, so it shows this overlap. You can see here's the overlap area if you want to create a mosaic. Similarly, uh, or very similar to um, Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, and you can set the rotation. Now this this part I actually don't like at all. Um, and the reason that I don't like it is that it's, it's showing you rotating the camera and the telescope. So you don't really know what this is going to look like when you get a frame. Now, of course, it's not that big of a deal, but it does make a difference. You know, it, 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 it makes a difference in the way that you envision the frame or what you're trying, trying to Im image. I don't know what this recenter image is. Let's see. We'll hit it again. Okay. So I think I think what it does is it just like recenters around what the box is um, for the camera. Okay. So let's do that. And then and one thing I I like about this is that like so here I I have my focal length as you know three eighty two. That's my GT eighty one. I want to use my Rokinon lens. I just put one thirty five. And as soon as I change it, it does that. With Sequence Generator Pro, one of the negative parts is that you have to reload the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, it actually resizes it as well. But this is, I don't know, it feels a little bit like more instant or something, you know. Um, there you go. So something like that. Okay, and then you can uh, do similar you know, either add to the sequence or replace the sequence altogether. Um, and then if you hit replace the sequence altogether, uh, it sets everything up for you and you can start to actually uh, create your sequence. Now, I, I haven't messed around with this at all, so I don't know the, uh, the, the details of it, but uh, uh, here, just looking at it, like you can turn on your guide scope, Blue to the target, center of the target, and then I'm assuming that, like, you know, that will um, uh, actually uh, uh, start things up for you. What I don't like about Nina so far, just looking at it, is certainly it feels like Sequence Generator Pro is is uh, much more polished than um, than Nina. Like, there's just little things around Nina that. Are a little odd, but it is free. It is open source, and uh, again, don't think this is a review of Nina. Um, definitely, like I'm a huge supporter of open source software, and I do hope to actually start using this. And um, we definitely they they need support and they need feedback for how to make things better, um, which is one of the greatest things about um, open source software that developers are usually open to feedback. Okay, uh, that's that's really all I wanted to go through. It, it, you know, it's very similar. You know, there's just the only you know really big thing. I'm, I mean, it's not even that big to be honest with you. Is the rotation? It doesn't rotate the image. It rotates the um, the camera. And I think rotating the image gives the uh, astrophotographer more of a visual idea of what the end image is going to look like. Um, and with, you know, removing a little bit more of the guesswork. So, uh, with that, uh, I hope you do try it and, uh, enjoy it. And if you do try it, you know, definitely let me know your experience, uh, in the comments. I, I would really appreciate that. Okay. Thanks everyone. Bye.